Hello, I'm Matthew Jaron. I'm the museum curator here at the University of Dundee, and welcome to the Darcy Thompson Zoology Museum. So, almost all of the specimens that you see here were originally acquired by Darcy Thompson, who was the first professor of biology here at the university, what was then University College Dundee. So he came here in 1885 and almost immediately began amassing huge numbers of specimens. And in a relatively short space of time, he built up what actually became one of the largest natural history museums of its kind anywhere in the UK. Now, sadly, that original museum was demolished in the 1950s, along with various other buildings, to make way for the Tower Building. And a lot of specimens at that time were lost or sent elsewhere. So what we have now is really a small fraction of his original collection, but we still have many thousands of specimens, uh, and a lot of them are on display here in the museum. So the way that the museum is laid out is that uh, around the main uh, walls of the museum here, uh, the specimens are laid out taxonomically. So we've kind of deliberately tried to keep the feel of, you know, the original Victorian museum. Um, but then in the centre here, we have more up-to-date thematic displays. So for example, uh, over here, we're looking at uh, Darcy's connections to whaling and exploration. One of the main ways that Darcy was able to acquire specimens for the museum was via the Dundee whalers. Uh, at that time in the late 19th century, Dundee was really the leading European capital of the whaling industry. So Darcy made friends with the whaling captains, encouraged them to bring back specimens for him. And because he was able to get things that no other collector could get, he was then able to swap duplicate specimens with other museums and other collectors around the world, and thus build up this huge collection. Partly because of his connections with the whalers and his own expeditions, uh, Darcy knew a lot of the leading explorers of the day, including Ernest Shackleton. And in 1907, Darcy actually helped to persuade Shackleton to take one of his former students on Shackleton's Nimrod expedition, uh, the Farther South expedition. And uh, this former student, Alistair Forbes Mackay, uh, went on the expedition as a junior surgeon and naturalist. And he was actually part of the party that became the first in the world to reach the South Magnetic Pole. Um, it's one of these forgotten tales of Antarctic heroism uh, that it was actually a former Dundee student that was one of the first in the world to reach the Magnetic Pole. And as a result of that, on their return from the Antarctic, uh, Shackleton actually presented Darcy with this rather splendid king penguin that you see here. So as well as all the various specimens that we have, we also have a lot of Darcy's original uh, teaching charts, models, and various other materials, uh, which are really wonderful examples of scientific visualisation. So what we have here, for example, are some models of um, organisms called radiolaria. So these are single-celled organisms, but they really fascinated Darcy because they grow these incredibly intricate skeletons uh, in very sort of geometrically precise forms. Um, and this is one of the things that really fascinated Darcy in his interest in applying mathematics to biology. Uh, so these ones were actually made by uh, a model maker called uh, Frick of Prague. Um, and they're one of the things that inspired a lot of the illustrations in the book that he's very famous for writing called On Growth and Form. And you can see our first edition of the book um, up here. Um, so on growth and form really pioneered a whole new science of, of biomathematics. It was the first time that anyone had really tried to systematically study uh, the way that organisms grow and the forms that they take using laws of physics and mathematics. One of the things that we have in the museum is quite a nice collection of fossils. Um, some of these are original fossils, like the uh, lovely ichthyosaur here. Uh, some of them are casts, like this um, cast of the famous Berlin specimen of the Archaeopteryx. Um, we actually did a really nice project uh, with this a couple of years ago, working with Brendan Bode at Dun Duncan of Jordanson College of Art and Design, um, where he did a 3D scan of the specimen and then created a wonderful kind of anim animated sequence of it coming to life, running around and growing feathers and flying off. Um, so it's kind of an example of, of some of the various ways that we've used to try and find interesting different methods of, of interpreting the collections and trying to visualise uh, the specimens and Darcy's ideas in different ways. As well as the various fossils, there are also other extinct and endangered animals in the museum. So for example, the huia birds from New Zealand uh, and the thylacine. And as well as all of the specimens on display, there are many, many more here in store. So for example, lots of uh, specimens in, in fluid preservation. Uh, and many of these come from the whalers. So for example, this one here, there's a little Arctic isopod, uh, Arcturus baffini, uh, that was collected in the Davis Straits in the 1890s. So that's just some of the many things that we have here in the Zoology Museum. There's lots more to see. So we look forward to welcoming you here soon.